Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we find ourselves in the eternal city where your cult will try to gain the minds and souls of the whole world. You'll be doing that in this worker placement game by Cryptozoic Entertainment. In cult, you'll be placing priests and patriarchs in different locations around the city and trying to have the most influence to activate that location's ability. You'll be trying to win by triggering one of the game's three different win conditions, like building five altars, gaining four fanatical mobs, or summoning twice. Cult is on Kickstarter right now, so I'm going to give you an overview of how the game works, and I'll see you on the other side. Now this is a Kickstarter preview, so any art and components you see are prototype components and you'll want to check the Kickstarter page for the final components and artwork. Cult is a 2-4 to four player worker placement game where you'll be able to pick which cult you'll be throughout the game. Here's just some of the ones that you might be able to be. And each cult has a lighter side and a darker side with even more powerful abilities. Throughout the game, you're going to be placing your priests out into the eternal city in one of the 13 different locations, trying to have the most influence so you can take over some of those special abilities. And you'll be trying to win the game by completing one of the three possible end game objectives, one of which is having five different altars throughout the eternal city. Another way is by gaining four fanatical mobs. The last possible way to win is to summon twice at the Rift of Darkness, where you need to have at least as much influence as the divine might of your cult. And when you do that, you'll be able to flip to the dark side and be able to have more powerful abilities. But in order to summon again, now you need more influence because your divine might is higher. Now each player is going to start with their cult, some money, some followers. By the way, check the Kickstarter page because these look really cool in the final product. You're going to start with some priests and a patriarch. Now the game is played over multiple rounds, each round going through two phases. The first phase is the intention phase, where you'll be placing priests to gain influence on different locations, and then you'll go through the resolution phase, resolving all of these locations. Now in the Eternal City, there's 13 locations, but you can't just go to anyone you want. You see, there's a certain amount of followers you need in order to get to a different level of the city. For example, everyone starts with two followers, so at the beginning of the game, you can go at any of the first six locations because you only need one follower. But to get to location seven, eight, or nine, you need at least three followers, 10 and 11, five followers, and 12 and 13, seven followers. So in the intention phase, starting with the start player and going clockwise, each player is going to place one of their priests in these different locations. And once they're placed, by default, they're not going to move anywhere. Now, when placing priests out there, your first three are free, and everyone after that you place, you must get rid of one of your followers. And this will go clockwise until all players have passed, and you don't have to place all your priests. You could pass at any point, but then you're out for that specific intention round. Now, once someone passes, a few things happen. Number one is you can possibly activate some of the, uh, a location on the board, depending on how many fanatical mobs you have. Remember, that's one of the possible win conditions is to get four of those. But if you have one of them with the flames, you can activate any one of the things immediately here when you pass. If you have two, you can do one on this row, three, and so on and so forth. Now also when you pass, you'll be able to sell certain intrigue cards that you'll get later that we'll talk about, but you'll be able to sell them to make some money if you need to, and or you can buy a license card for a specific amount of money, and they'll give you different abilities that we'll go over later. Now once all players have passed and possibly done uh, those different things that I just mentioned after passing, we then go on to a resolution phase, and starting with the first location and going through the numbered locations, we see who has the most influence there. Now you only resolve ones that actually have any priests or altars there, uh, but like for example we go here. This is the ruins. So first of all we're going to look at the influence right now. It looks like the red cult is winning 3 to 1 in influence. However, before finally resolving that location, each player starting with the first player has the option of doing one of the following. They could play a miracle card, which might change things. For example, this one allows someone to place uh, one of their free priests in the active location, assuming they have enough followers. Now, it's not just the people that are in these locations that get the chance. Every player going clockwise, starting with the first player, gets to do one of these things. Or someone might play an intrigue card where no player in the active location gets to gain the benefit. Or you could use one of the abilities on your cult. For example, this player might be able to spend six coins, increase the strength of one of the priests in that active location by one, and then move it to the next location because maybe they see something better they can do. 
After all players have had a chance to do one of those things, we then finally resolve it and see who has the most influence. In this case, it's red. They would get to do this ability. All other players here that did not win get the certain amount of coins that is on the board, in this case, one. Now, if there's a tie, it goes to whatever cult has the highest divine might. And then you'd go on to the next location that has at least one priest or altar, and you continue to go through doing this through all the locations. So let's look at some of these abilities and what they do. Now this one's draw a miracle card, which is the deck here. And these do things like the one I already showed you, which is you can add a priest uh, to your active location. Now these miracle cards do other certain things like being able to increase your priest's uh, influence in that location by three, gaining a follower or some money, or allows you to uh, remove a certain amount of followers, in that case three, to change one of your priests into an altar, which always changes to four for influence in that region. If you win the thieves district, you can pay a certain amount of coins between 3 and 13, and essentially you'd win that location when that one is to be resolved. You'd move this plus all the money to that location, and when that location is resolved, you essentially win it. Or if you win the slums, you gain a follower, which remember the followers are great because they help you go to different locations the more you get. If you win at the forum, you can take the supremacy card, which is really powerful because it allows you to add 7 to your Patriarch, which remember is already the strength of how many followers you have. Uh, plus, if you want to at the beginning of an intention phase of a round, you can skip the entire round to gain any one of these really powerful abilities for that round. Now, if you win the Temple District, you can either gain a new priest, put it near your uh, yourself off the board, it's basically an additional priest as a worker to put on the board, or you can remove one of the ones on the board and place uh, one that's one higher than that. And if you win the Trade District, you get to gain six coins. Now, if you win the Artisan District, you can pay five coins to build an altar. Building an altar is essentially flipping any one of your priests over, and it's a four, and it's permanently there. It doesn't move after resolving or at the end of the round, but they can be removed by certain other abilities throughout the game. At the Academy, you can pay five coins to increase the strength of one of your priests by two, or pay 11 to increase their strength by four. At the port, you can gain followers. You spend a certain amount of coins to get a certain amount of followers. Now, if you win at the palace, you can take one of these face-up license cards at no cost. This is the typical cost, but if you win this, you can take them without uh, basically paying anything. And these do different things. Number one, all these cards go in front of you, and each of these increase your patriarch's uh, influence by that much. They also have different abilities. The oracle here allows you essentially to put uh, priests in location 13 even if you don't have enough followers that you would need usually need in order to do so now the approval allows you to not have to discard and get rid of a follower when you place a certain amount of priests if you remember when you place more than three you lose a follower during the uh, intention phase in this case when you place your six priests you do not have to lose a follower now you would have to lose it for the fourth and fifth priest that you put out but not for the six and the runes community here this means in the in the runes community, which is location one, when you uh, have at least one influence there, you automatically get that benefit, whether you actually have the most influence or not. The nobility district allows you to draw two of these intrigue cards, return one from your hand to the top of the intrigue deck, and basically use the other one as we've shown you previously what those intrigue cards do. Now the guard quarters allows you to lose two followers to gain a fanatical mob, and if you remember those fanatical mobs allow you to get basically free actions as you pass on certain levels of the city, but they also are a win condition if you get four of them. Now the Rift of Darkness allows you to perform summoning. To do that, you need at least as much influence as your divine might. And when you do so, you'll be able to flip this over to the dark side, which gives you more powerful abilities. And then in a subsequent round, if you're able to get the uh, same amount of influence or more than the higher might on the dark side, that's when you would win the game. So players keep playing through those rounds, going through the intention phase, which is placing the priests, and doing resolving and resolving all these locations until one of the players has one of those three victory conditions, having five altars in the locations, uh, being able to summon twice, or having four fanatical mobs. Now the different cults work in different ways. They use different things to activate their abilities and they do different things. For example, this one, you can, for the change of guys, you can play a card with one of these dark seals if you discard a card and spend three coins. And these are typically more powerful abilities like the cult with the most coins must give you half of their coins rounded up. Or you must lose three followers to then place an altar in one of the locations you, ha you have an active priest in. And for this ritual, you could put a priest with a strength of three or more here, and then you would destroy three of your free priests to gain a priest with a strength of five and place it in the active location. And on the dark side, the attack of the dragons, each cult with an influence in the active location loses a fanatical mob, but it costs you three cards. This one costs you a priest with a strength of five, 
uh, and allows you to play a miracle card, then draw two miracle cards. And now that you know more how the game works, here is that opening shot I showed of all the different cults. You can pause the video now, look at these abilities if you like. Well, I hope this overview helped you understand the game and how it works at a deeper level. Now, this is a worker placement game, but as you can tell, there's a lot of different things going on. By placing priests of different influence, uh, placing the different patriarchs who are equal to the amount of followers you have. So as you gain or lose followers, your patriarch becomes more or less powerful. Plus, you're only able to go to those locations with however many followers you have. So you're trying to work up the followers to be able to go to those more powerful locations. But then you're trying to get those fanatical mobs because you're going to be able to take those actions of certain locations when you pass you know as, as you're going down with more and more of these fanatical mobs or you're trying to work all the way down and summon twice so there's a lot of different things and they're all sort of integrated with each other but definitely different paths that you're going to want to go on so if you're interested in this i placed the link below me in the description of this video and if you want to check out the kickstarter page that's the best place to see it and i'm sure the people at cryptozoics entertainment would love your support